This is a video on how to create grids in Revit. To create grids, go to the Home tab and look for the Datum panel. There you'll find an icon for grid. When placing grids, use the Draw panel to use the appropriate draw method. There's a line approach for creating grid lines, two arc modes for creating gridded arcs, and also a pick lines mode which allows you to choose an existing line or arc from the model and use that as a reference for the grid. You can also use this method to even pick a face on an object and use that as a reference as well. Here's a quick example with the pick lines mode. So here I'm going to grid, pick lines, and pick the center line of the wall. And right there, it placed a new grid. However, I'll be constructing new grid lines by simply drawing them with two points. I'm going to go back to draw grids based on line. As I draw my grid in plan view, notice how the first click is a tail and the second click becomes the location of the bubble. Don't worry if you've accidentally meant to draw the bubble end first. Swapping the head and tail is easy. I'll show you how to do that when we get to modify grids. I'm going to draw several grid lines horizontally. And in order to aid in this process, I'm going to first take my cursor and hover over the endpoint of one of the other grid lines. If I want to separate it 20 feet off of this, I can use the temporary dimension to measure. You can also have the dashed blue line appear and you can type in 20 feet. It makes it a little bit easier than having to make sure that you're right on that number. Now notice how as I created this grid, I started actually with number 2, and then it incremented to 3, 4, 5, and 6. And I should have probably changed this number to 1 first, and then started drawing the other grid, grids. Now I'm ready to do some vertical grids. Now notice that this value is now a number. However, I do want to change this to an alphabet character. And I'll do this right now so that all the next grids that I draw will basically be incremented from there. So this will be B, here's C, D, E. Now we'll take a look at modifying some of these grids. Like I said earlier, if you need to swap the bubble so that they appear at a different end, you can take advantage of these checkboxes. When the checkbox has a little check through it, that means that the grid bubble is on. When it's off like this, it turns off. And so I can go to the other end and modify the checkbox there. You can also control the overall length of the grids by stretching them. In order to stretch, select one of the grids and look for these circles. There's a circle for, uh, for each end, one here and another one that sits in between the line and the grid bubble. You can drag that and the grids will resize. The reason why these other grid lines are moving together is because they're constrained in this one row. 
if you want to modify one of these grid lines separately away from the lengths of these other ones when you pick on a grid there's a little deadbolt and you can click on that to release and that breaks the constraint however when you bring the endpoint in close proximity back to the same row again it's going to automatically turn on the constraint in turn constraining all the rest when you have a bunch of grid bubbles together you may also run into some conflict maybe the grid bubbles may run into each other for that very reason you have an add elbow tool when you pick on it you can add a little jog so that you can place the grid bubble anywhere else you need you can also bring the two dots back to each other and that will basically bring it back to its original place with these grid lines you may also see that there's a 3D button now currently at the moment if I were to take a look at a different view I'll notice that the grid lines are actually sitting with the same length however if I wanted to just make a change to this one item and I was showing you earlier with the stead bolt that you could well, one of the things happens that's happening is if you go to a different level that change is happening throughout or a different view so for that very reason, instead of resizing it that way, I can turn on 2D extents, which means change the grid line only in this view. However, leave the other views just the way it was like when it was in 3D. When I bring this end back, that's when it turns to 3D again to bring it back to its original place. So basically this is, can be thought of as an override. Now if you have a bunch of these changes made and you wanted these to actually be reflected in some of the views but not in others when you pick on a grid and I'm going to hold down control to select multiple grids for this there's an option on the ribbon called datum propagate extents and this takes the two-dimensional views or any of the changes that I've made to the grids to parallel views and so I'll just do that right now I'm going to replicate the changes onto ceiling plans level one now if I were to check ceiling plans level one I should also find those 2D extents happening there however all the other views will be still left alone Also, when you're dealing with views, you're also dealing with view these levels and grids in elevation as well. Now, if I were to take these grids and bring them down below an elevation, uh, below a level, I should say, and it's passing through level 1 but not level 2, you may guess level 1 will show the grids. However, level 2 will be missing those grids. So just be aware that you must have these grid lines pass through the levels in order for them to be shown in their respective floor plan. And with that, I'd just like to thank everyone. Thank you.
and until next time.